Thank you for joining me at such short notice. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Let's basically uh, jump into the interview by, sit, by me asking you this. So, sure. who is Brad Stozik? Ah, all right. Um, pretty easy. I'm just a 28-year-old father of two, just uh, living the dream, man. All right. All right. Yeah. Now, Brad, I don't know you well at all. Actually, you basically just walked up to me um, yeah, correct. In, the, in, in the podcast community, which I appreciate. And I'm already inspired by that. You basically <laughs> walked up and said in the uh, various groups that were on in Facebook for blind and visually impaired people. And, you know, I, I, I was, you know, I work, you know, all day like you do. And I, I kind of forget the post, but the impression that you gave in that post, Brad, was that there are some things that are really concerning you. And I want to make sure that we address all of those things. And yeah. I want to make sure that you hear my opinions and hear my knowledge for what it's worth and, you know, decide um, if this is helpful to you. I intend mm -hmm. on producing a great episode, but I also intend on helping you, helping one more person named Brad. So what are all of your concerns? Tell me everything. <sighs> So I was not born blind. Um, I'm aware. Yeah, I figured. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it, I'm having a really hard time going from being able to drive and being able to do things and being independent to that just getting taken away. And um, it's very, it's a very dark place. And up until I found this group, it was very, it feels very lonely. Um, yeah. And, and just being, you know, a, a veteran going from you know this is what you have to do to pick up this rank and this is what you have to do to accomplish this to hey thanks for your service to now i don't feel like i have a purpose in in life anymore well thank you for your service um i was born blind so i was never able to serve in the military but i have a vested interest in the military and our country so thank you Thanks. For for another, um, so how did you become blind? Um, so I was born with a condition called Chiari malformation. Um, so basically, my brain stem was growing out of my spinal cord, and um, so I had a surgery to fix that. And where the blood patch was placed, it was leaking spinal fluid, um, and the spinal fluid crushed my optic nerves essentially and uh, killed the optic nerves. Okay. Interesting. Yes. So at, at what point did this happen? Um, in other words, and in other words, at what point I'm a little confused now because sure. so at what point did you become blind? Okay. So um, I started having symptoms from the Chiari malformation when I was about 23. Um, so I was getting really bad headaches every time I coughed, every time I sneezed, like just unbearable headaches. Like there was days where I couldn't even get out of bed. Um, so I, that's when I went, so it started about 23 and then I had the surgery. Um, and then right after the surgery, the, it was leaking the spinal fluid. So it was a period of about three months from, um, the surgery to when I first started noticing like severe vision loss. And then, so probably the whole entire, it was about like a year probably from like the surgery to diagnosis of visually impaired. Okay, and now how long did you serve in the Marines? I was in the Marine Corps for five years. So what what time frame were you in the Marines? What years and what, like what what time frame? Yeah, so uh, I graduated high school in 2011. Um, I spent my summer at home and then shipped out in December of 2011, and then served through uh, 2016. I got out. Okay, good. So you served in the Marines, and then you started having all of these uh, vision issues. Um, correct. Well, I, I started having the headaches while I was in the Marine Corps is at the end of my service. Um, so of course I went to, you know, the hospital and medical and they were just telling me that it was allergies. So they gave me a leg and stuff and it just, it, it just never went away. So yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so more to, I mean, if you want, you can tell me what type of work you did in the Marines. And if you want, you can expand upon 
these different blindness issues that now you're having to deal with. So yeah, take the conversation any way you want. Yeah. Um, so for the Marine Corps of, you know, I hated my job, <laughs> you know, I was a cook, so I didn't, I didn't pick that. It was, I went open contract. Um, but I, you know, I learned to like it. I met a lot of great people, a lot of awesome people. And, uh, it was a great, I lived in Okinawa, Japan for five years and I got to experience that, that culture. And I did, I wouldn't trade it for the world. It was, it was amazing, you know? Good, good. Okay. Yeah. So now that you're done with all of that, so what are your yeah. concerns about being blind now? Oh, <sighs> so I guess just getting through everyday life, you know, not, I not feeling accepted. Right. Because I, I have some vision. Right. You know, so it, it feels like I'm not fully accepted in the, in the sighted community, but I'm right. also not accepted in the, the blind community either. And, and it's just like, a, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird place to be in. It is. It, and yeah. I will tell you that this is to some extent, the community that I can also relate to as someone who is blind, but has usable vision. Yeah. So I hate to disappoint you, but yeah. you will never completely fit in perfectly in either community. Right. So what you have to do is surround yourself with the right people who basically are supportive of you whatever that personality is right you have right. to find people who agree with you who have your same values similar values to you you know th things like that um i mean i'm i'm going to i'm going to tell you right now and to be overly honest about this that i think probably a lot of the blind people around the community probably don't have your same values Right. Only, only the reason I'm saying this is because you already mentioned that you served in the military and generally people who serve in the military think one way. Right. And generally people in the disability, disability community think a way that is different from those who serve in the military. Okay. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be very direct with you and say that Blind people are now, of course, I'm on your I'm on your train of thought. I, you know, I have the same philosophy as you do about life, but I'm right. just telling you the vast majority, the other blind people in many of these groups are not going to really see the world the way you do and are not really going to have your worldview. Um, so what that means is that the good thing about that is that you don't need to worry because they will never truly, you know, want to really be friends with you and want to truly be supportive, okay? Right. I'm mm -hmm. someone who has overcome a lot of discrimination with the blindness, with my political views, with the way I see the world. So I, I'm someone who does understand where you're coming from. The point of me saying all of that is a lot of these other people in these groups are not going to really be able to understand where you're coming from because right. they were, they were born blind. Some of them, some of them were born mm -hmm. blind. Some of them work. Okay. Like me, but the truth of the matter is, is that there are, an, there is an enormously high number of blind people who are disenfranchised in some way or another um, through mass discrimination, profound, profound discrimination. And so because of that, they can't really relate to society being, you know, the other way, the way that you and I see society, you know? Right. So this is something that you're just going to have to learn to, to grin and bear, you know, mm -hmm. you know how in military organization, we might say, you know, grip and grin, you know, when you're shaking hands with people, you know, right. Well, in, in these types of things, another, another way to grin is if, if you're going to deal with these people and, and post in these groups with th thank you for posting it, by the way, I, I appreciated the post, oh, thank but, you. but, but you're going to have to understand that you're going to have to take a little bit of abuse if you want to post in these groups. And right. my 
concern that I have seen is that the the way that people are oftentimes treated in these groups is relatively poor only because if you were treated well everywhere else you wouldn't need a group you know it's like when people say like i don't mean to be rude but or no offense but well if you really want my opinion but 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 there's what i'm really illustrating is look there's a lot of there's a lot of hypocrites in these groups and there's a lot of great people who are my friends who are wonderful friends do not get me wrong. Do not misunderstand my little speech here. There are a lot of great people in those groups that care and, and support you and care about what's going on. Okay. And mm-hmm. the people who disagree with you, they might care too, but they might just still disagree. So what I'm saying is it's really, really, really important. And as a podcaster and content creator, I'm discovering this more and more and more and more and more. Rapport, 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 rapport. You have to build rapport with the right people. Let me give you another clue. There are wrong people to build rapport with. (laughs) So it's more important than you would ever think and more important than ever before. You do need to pick what people and you do need to pick personalities sometimes and to be able to say, say to yourself, well, this person just isn't my cup of tea. You know what? They just don't support where I've come, where I've come from. They just don't support my, my history. They just don't support me. Fine. You know what? Free country, right? Absolutely. So, so Absolutely. you know, free country, smoke it if you got it, go somewhere else, go on some other group. But what I'm saying is, Brad, don't allow these people in these groups to ever pull you down. I right. promise, I promise they will. I promise you'll be upset. And if you need to talk, just talk to me because Thank I you. care, because I care. All right. I'm going to tell Absolutely. you my, uh, my father served in the Navy. My, actually my Great grandfather, father's side, served in, in World War One. Um, my another relative served in the Korean War. Uh, my brother's friend is currently serving in the military overseas. Mm-hmm. Um, and as hysterical as it all, all is, when I was much younger, um, now I'm 30 years old. But about you know when I was a teenager, I wanted to serve in the military. And I thought it was really weird that blind people can't. But anyway, that's another debate for another for another <laughs> an, another another discussion. Yeah, you loved that. You loved that. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's really strange that people with disabilities are not are not in the military. But I digress. That's really beside the point. So now I'm 30 <laughs> years old. Um, I'm a teacher and podcaster. And I, as I said over Messenger, I I created this podcast be, because we need to be open in the podcast community. And mm-hmm. by saying that, I'm, I'm also telling you that there are some people, no, I'm not going to name drop. I'm not going to go into, I, I, I don't need to, nor do I want to insult people in the community. But th- there are, in my opinion, there are people who are in this community who are just not open people. That's fine. But we need to be, we need to improve in, in our community of blind people, of successful blind people. And we need to make sure that, that we're open people. So that's kind of, that's kind of my speech to you. And like, what other questions do you have about blindness and needing to adapt to things? Now, let me also tell you, I was born blind. So if you're going to try to explain things, it's a little hard for me to understand, but all I know is that I care and that I'm trying to understand this, you know, from your perspective. And it's a little weird for me to understand, like being a sighted person, Mm -hmm. being successful in the military and then going blind, like, that that must be really weird. I was having a, a guest on the podcast last night having the same discussion. This must be really weird, this whole becoming blind business. So talk for a bit. It is. It's uh sorry, I'm I always get emotional about it. I'm sorry. Um you're for your free please share your emotions. That's that's good. You're a strong person then if you share your emotions with me. Tell me. Yeah, it's it's tough. You know, it's really hard. Um I don't know. I just, I just, I don't feel like I, I feel like I don't have a purpose anymore in life. And I just, it, it's just, it's really hard to, to, you know, wake up driving one day, the next day, not. And that's so much freedom. It, it, it's, it really is. It's, I feel like I'm back in high school and you know how you have to like ask your mom for a ride or your friend's mom for a ride and like, Oh, pick you up at 10 30 or whatever. Like, that's what it feels like at 28 years old, like as a grown man. Yeah. Um, and you know, and then I've had people, 
you know, I, I went to a, a sporting event. The, the team scored. I stood up and I cheered. And there was a gentleman in our row. He walks past me um, and he leans into me and he says, you're not as blind as we think you are. And, you know, I was just on a date with my wife, you know, like, I, I how do you how do you respond to that? I, I just I don't I, I don't get it. And the only thing that I, I want, why I reached out to that group is I, I'm so tired of being angry and sad all the time. Those are the only two emotions I feel yeah. is anger and sadness. And, dude, I, I, I just want peace. You know, and I, I want it for me and I want it for my kids mm-hmm. and my wife. And it's because uh, I. It's not right, but. Uh, I take a lot of my anger out on my kids, you know, just because they're home. Yeah. And uh, it sucks, you know, because they just want to spend time with me. You know, at, at one point I found that um, I enjoyed doing puzzles and stuff. So I, I thought, you know, maybe Lego and give that a shot which it, it helps. It's like doing puzzles. It's cool. So my son, he had a Lego set and he, he asked for help in all the colors. It just, I couldn't see it. It blended in and it looked the same. And, and I yelled at him. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I yelled at him and all he wanted to do, he just wanted to, to build Legos with his dad. And that's, that's the thing. I, I don't, I feel like I don't get to be the dad that I wanted to be. You know, I wanted to coach baseball and I wanted to, I had all these, these dreams and I, I can't even see them on the sidelines anymore. And it's just, it kills me, you know, it just, it absolutely kills me. You know, we all have certain things that we are, you know, less than amused about or less than happy about. And I have them too in my own life dealing with, my own challenges, you know, the, the secret that these blind people in these groups are not telling you, and I'll be the first to tell you. Okay. Just, just relax. Here I tell you what, do you have, um, do you have maybe a cup of coffee or water with you right now? Oh, oh no, I'm good. I'm sorry. No, no, that's no, 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 that's that's fine. That's fine. I'm just saying, as I'm talking, you can take a drink of water, you know, just take, just take, just take a deep breath. You know, I'm, I'm really glad we're having this. I am really glad we're having this discussion. Yeah. So, you know, you know, um, the, the truth, well, the truth is, and the thing that these other blind people in these various groups will never tell you because they're far too cool, cool for their cucumbers to admit it is that we all have things that we're angry about or feel anger or feel sadness, okay? I do, you do, because we're humans, right? We're homo right. sapiens sapiens, right? So all people have anger, okay? We, we all have these feelings. Right? It doesn't matter how successful I am at my podcasting or my teaching job, do I still have some little, little issues? Sure, not the same issues that you have because I don't have, because I don't have a wife or kids. Thanks to God, thanks to God for that. But yeah. No, not yet anyway. You know, and, and as we get to know each other better, you'll learn more about my life. You know, the way I grew up, man, I grew up in a rural community um, and there weren't really other people around me. So I've just grown up with my family and gone to university and worked and just sort of gone about my business, but I've never had a chance, you know, socially. So for, 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 for example, for example, when I was a teenager, hey, did I feel sad sometimes when, I maybe didn't have a girlfriend or I saw people around me that were maybe getting a little bit more ahead socially. Sure. A little bit. But then I discovered that, well, I'm more of an introvert right now and I need to just focus on my work right now. And you know that I do, I did a lot of traveling and a lot of different active activities. So the fact is, is that everybody has some level of, you know, little thing that we could improve in our lives. Right. Um, Oh gosh, I I don't want you know what, I I I don't want to tell you on the air because I don't want to I don't want to upset anyone in the audience and make them feel sad. But I'll tell I'll tell you about it off the air about something that I feel sad about, and what I have to do about it and what I what, what what I do about it. The point is this: you need to start talking, you need to start podcasting, you need to start connecting with as many successful blind people who care about you as you can possibly find. And if I'm the first one, fine. I certainly hope that there are others. If there is no one else in this entire country that cares about you, 
and cares about sharing your story, then we have serious, serious problems. By the way, we do have serious problems. But I'm just saying, if that truly Absolutely. is the, you know, if that truly is the case, if I'm the only person who's willing to take your case and help you share it, then I'm going to do that because that, at the very least, is the right thing to do. Next question: Are you connected at all? So, you know, I, I'm I'm not saying that you need to join any type of organization, but. Are you a member of NFB? Are you a member of ACB? Are you familiar with AFB? You know, what, what, ad, what advocacy organizations have you already joined? Um, so the only type of advocacy, anything, um, I did the blind rehabilitation through the VA. Um, uh -huh. Essentially, they, they basically taught me how to be visually impaired, you know, how to live my life. Okay, but did they, so I had a veteran on the podcast just a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. and he runs a nonprofit that is a, that advocates for veterans and their rights. Um, my concern about what you just said is I think that probably, although the VA was great, yeah, probably we're not enough. Right. Correct? That's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> tomorrow, um, as I have more free time, you see, I do most of my working on Saturday and Sunday. I get more students on the weekend. So the, gotcha. time, the times of the weeks that I actually take action are the times where everyone else would work. Monday morning is the time where I would do the most communication. Um, you know, so there, there's, there's that person that you should absolutely connect with. Um, and you should, you should give him a call and explain, uh, your story and see if he is able to give you some pointers, give you some advice and give you some support, um, because you need it. Yeah. Um, the other thing is outside of that, have you joined any type of blindness, um, organization? No. That's, okay. Well, no. if you... If you want my honest opinion, I think that probably if you were to join one of those organizations, such as NFB, that's the biggest one, that is the largest, you know, advocacy organization for blind people in the world. So you should, um, you should contact uh, them um, if you need help doing that or advice in knowing who to contact, um, I can uh, certainly um, give you uh, uh, advice on that. I can certainly um, figure out the person that you would need to contact in your state. Um, you. And that would be the first thing so that you can get, get in touch with that person. The <clears throat> second thing after you do that is there are many groups on Facebook for blind people where there's parenting groups. Um, there's a group for the there's a group of people on Facebook who are parents who have blind children, but you're actually a blind parent who has sighted children. Um, I'm guessing based on the story you told. Yes. And right. so, but either way, you should join a group and you should introduce yourself and explain your story and say that, look, here are all, here's all the problems I'm having right now. I need your support. And I've, I've kind of had enough with people being silly and not being supportive. So yeah. th th these are the things that need to start happening. Now, I'm, I'm gonna tell you that these are all very slow. You know, it's a very, very, very slow and, and monotonous process. Nothing happens overnight. We're speaking in August. You won't even hear this podcast until November because okay. I have so many other guests ahead of you, so many other great people from all over the world ahead of you that you won't hear this podcast um, until, until November. November. Sometime. We'll get to that later. But yeah. in the meantime, you need to start getting connected with these various organi organizations so that they can, give you, they can give you some tools and they can give you some guidance and they can just be, be supportive. And they can say, well, here's how I resolve that situation. Here's what I do to, to manage that. And really, that's what these groups should be doing. Um, yeah, so that's a lot of what needs to happen. Mm -hmm.
what do you, do what do you think about all of that? Yeah, yeah, I'm absolutely all for reaching out. I just I didn't know where to look. You know, I know that's why you posted, and that's why you're talking to me. I know, absolutely. So right. yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um. All right. So, what are some other things that are going on? Just uh, I just I'm I'm trying to find peace, you know, and I don't know how to do that, and it seems like everybody's answer is religion. And that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Like if that's, that's your thing, that's awesome. That's not my cup of tea. So I'm also really right now struggling. Like, I don't know where to turn for peace, you know? So right now I turn to weed <laughs> like, and yeah, sure. It makes me calm and chill for the moment, but once my, you know, once I come down and still sad and depressed or whatever, Mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. just and you know i use it it's weird i'm i'm a much better person when i am you know under the influence so right right and yeah i i just i need to find that peace just for you know for number one like you said myself but really for my family you know they my wife is just dude she's just i'm so lucky to have her in my life um, and I, I, if I wasn't, if she wasn't in my life, I don't think I would be here. And I know that's bad to say, and that's, but that's just, it's the truth. Yeah. It, it, it's, okay. she's my rock, man. I mean, just, yeah. Right. Right. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, you know, if you don't, you don't mind me asking probing questions, how did you, how did you come to, how, how did you come to meet her? Your, your wife? Uh, we actually grew up together uh went to high school together graduated yeah and got me yeah we started dating um senior year of high school mm-hmm. i left left for boot camp and then we got I got married when i was 19 and been together eight years now well, perfect yeah um yeah that's it's very that's very interesting yeah yeah so you know what the other the other thing to think about is okay you worked in food services in the military but mm-hmm. what would you i mean on a much brighter note you know yeah um and we needed to talk about all that stuff of course because that'll that'll end up helping you but on a brighter note you know what what lines of work what what type of work do you want to get into you know in the future moving forward from here what do you want to do for work yeah um i would love a comedy podcast. I actually dabbled in stand-up comedy for a little bit. It was yeah, well, okay. stop. Hold on. Stop, stop, stop. You know what I'm going to say. I'm going to give you one minute to make me laugh. Go. Uh, uh, I don't got, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's, I can't do it on the spot. I'm not that type of funny. I don't know. You aren't that, you aren't that type of funny. Really, really. Well, I, I, got, I <laughs> okay. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me whet your appetite. What's green and has wheels on it. Green and has wheels. Yeah. <laughs> what? I don't gr- grass. The, I lied about the wheels. Oh, gee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I guess funny's not really your thing either, then. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so, but so, I. So, I, you know, so wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So do you know? <laughs> do you know what you do know? What just happened, right? Uh. No, <laughs> you're you're saying that I'm not funny. You're saying that I'm not comedy material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, I just I like I like connecting with people. You know, I, I like I've always wanted to just make people laugh. So I, I did want to do like a comedy podcast, and I tried stand up. Um, but right now I'm actually going back to school for sociology. I want to teach diversity studies. Um, okay. Well, okay. You're now we're ju- we're jumping around here. So we have the comedy. Yeah. Um, yep. We have down that comedy's not for me, and then you jump right into that you want to teach diversity and you want to study so- sociology. So, what is your interest there? So my interest there is, I, I don't know what people are thinking, but the way that I've been treated in public. Um, 
it, people need to be educated. They need to yeah. be educated. And because the way that I feel like people with disabilities and visually impaired people, I guess I can't speak for other disabilities, but for visually impaired people, the way others interact, at least with me, it, it, it's unreal. I had a gentleman grab me in a public bathroom. I didn't even know this person come up behind me and guide me to a urinal in a public restroom. Didn't say anything, nothing, just guided me to the, to the urinal. So I, I just want to educate people on, on the right way to, and it's sad. It's sad that you need to educate people on how to treat people, but it needs to be done. Apparent, yeah, there you go. So Apparently we need to do that. Apparently we have to educate people about yeah. these matters that really we shouldn't be needing to educate people on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. Well, I think one of the ways, one of the secrets, and nobody tells you this except for me, is that you need to find work and find hobbies where you're able to contribute and help someone else. And when you start doing that, you'll notice over time that the responses you get from people are going to be different from time to time. Now you'll still get the weird people in bathrooms or weird people in stadiums. You'll always get that, but you'll also get people who truly care. So, okay. So what, tell me more about your interest in diversity and what this course would be and why someone would take it. And what do you want your impact to be in, in this whole field of diversity? You know, I, I think I just want to connect with people. I don't really, think it matters what the subject is that I'm talking about. I just, I think I just like connecting with people. And um, if I can change just one person's life, that's, that's all that matters, man, you know? And I, I just think I picked diversity studies and sociology because that's where, you know, you just, edu- on, on where people are different. Right. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, so how are you doing as it relates to studying sociology? Are you currently enrolled in, in university now or, or what? Mm-hmm. I, I am. Yeah, I was in, I was in for a while and then COVID hit. So I took uh, some time off, but I'm finally going back next fall or mm. this coming up fall actually. Mm. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep. Okay. Yeah. So are you going to study at a four-year university or a community or how are you going to get this degree in sociology? Mm-hmm. Um, I have two years left at a, the four-year university, and then I'm going to just roll right into a master's. Okay. Yeah. Well, if that's if that's for you, that's for you. I mean, I, I, I think that's great. So apart mm-hmm. from, you know, teaching this diversity course, what other, I mean, I guess what other impacts do you want to have? Just, you know, just change, I guess, people's way of thinking, change their outlook on life. You know, I, you know, in a, in a way I want, I wish everyone was blind to like other people. You know what I mean? Yeah. I Where, do. Just yeah. the way you treat people. It just, it blows mm-hmm. my mind. It blows my mind that, <clears throat> and, you know, and I, I'm not trying to change the world, but if I can't make a small impact and leave a little a little imprint that's that's all i'm asking for you know right it de- it definitely definitely <clears throat> um so um yeah i mean do you know do you know what the slogan is here at, at aaron's opinion no what's that what's that help one person today help a million people tomorrow so i agree with you if you can help one today you'll help a million later Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, and some other questions to think about, you know, what can you tell me about, you know, the community that you're living in now? It's a small suburby town. It, you know, it's really tight knit, clicky, some would mm-hmm. say. But yeah, just like a normal town. Good little neighborhood. Nothing, nothing crazy. Nothing mm-hmm. unusual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. And how, how old are your children now? Uh, six and four. Six and four. 
Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Well, that's 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 good. Yeah. Um, because hopefully they will forget some of these harder times, and hopefully by the time you graduate with your masters, you'll be in a better place, um, in a lot of different ways, and you'll be able to, you know, truly make their lives better. So, I, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I hope so. And I, you know what, in a weird, it's almost a, in a weird way is a blessing. Yeah. Not, not really. That, that's not a bad, I'm sorry, but I, I worked a lot. Um, I was gone, you know, I worked second shift. So I was gone from two to 10 every night, six days a week, didn't get to see my kids. Um, obviously once all the medical stuff happened, my vision, I got to spend time with them and it's been, dude, it's been awesome. Mm-hmm. It, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Now that two to 10 shift that you mentioned. Um, yeah. So was that when you were in the Marines or out of the Marines? No, that was out of the Marine Corps. So I was, uh, I was out for about um, a year, mm-hmm. two years or so. And then all the surgery stuff happened. No. Right. Right. So, and what, what job was that that you were working two in the morning until 10 in the morning? Oh, no, it was, I'm sorry. It's two in the afternoon until 10 at night, but it oh, was four, uh, okay. 1400 to 2200. Right. Yep. Correct. Okay. Um, it was like a snack food uh, company. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I see. And so yep. what, what, what were you doing for that, for that company? Oh, I was like a machine operator. Just made sure the machine that I was on maintained running. Mm-hmm. And clean, it, it typical factory job, you know. Okay, all right, yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um. So okay, so fine. Mm, so as someone who has been blind, you know, my entire life, um, I'm sure that you have a lot of questions. But what what questions do you have? you know, for me, what, what do you want to know for me? I guess just like, what, what, what's your secret? You know, how are you so dude, you're, you're inspiring. You know what I mean? Just talking to you just a little bit. You're, how do you do it? And how do I, how do I get there? <laughs> that's, I don't that's know. What, I don't know. I'll tell you, my background has been in education. So I, I, I talk to people all day and I love talking. So that's a lot of it. And thank you. I'm glad that you are another person that finds this podcast a sense of hope and inspiration. So we're, we're, we're on the right track. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> um, but, you know, I don't really know, you know, and I, as I said, um, I'll tell you something really sad off the air that happened just last year. Um, and then after that, I've had I've had a lot of a lot of issues with various you know different types of challenges um, you know outside of my work in podcasting. And what I've had to do, and the thing that you have to figure out is how do you how do you Brad want to spend your time, right? Because the way you spend your time is completely different from the way I would spend my time, right? You know, because I live with my parents and my brother. And, you know, our dynamic right now is my brother has a girlfriend, right? So she comes over a lot. But for me, I'm just kind of a single guy, kind of in a family, you know, in a family environment, right? Right. So the way that I spend my time and the advantages and disadvantages that you and I both have are completely different. You know, I'm able to just work all day and not worry about a wife or a child, right? You don't, you don't have that luxury, you know? So there's different, you know, we would, we would have to worry about different things. What you have to figure out a way to do is you have to figure out, well, even if I'm worried about this a little bit, what is something positive that I can do today that will just help me to feel a tiny bit better? And you would be surprised if you feel only a tiny bit better, that would be a lot better. You would feel, you would feel a lot better very, very quickly once you find activities that are good for you to do. And I think an activity that involves, I don't know, you, your wife, your children going out, you know, getting around the community, doing something nice together as a family. 
I think that would be really good for you, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So <clears throat> I would hope that you served our country in the Marines because you love the United States, right? Of course. <laughs> okay. So I would hope that you would want to find some activity to do involving taking your wife and kids out and doing a family activity that you all love, right? Absolutely. Okay. So I don't really know what that activity is. That's not really my wheelhouse. That's not really where I am in life. I don't really know, you know. Um, <laughs> um, but <clears throat> there's got to be something where if it's not, you know, the, sco the soccer game, maybe it's a hike or just a peaceful walk in a park or going out to, you know, a, a game or something like that or some sort of a hike where something where you all can do it all together as a family. I think that would be, I think that would be really good. So for instance, I mean, in your town, wherever it is, I mean, are there parks where you can hike? Um, not so much hiking, flatland. <laughs> so there's like state parks that we can, yeah, there's, there's places. Okay. <laughs> well, well, that counts. If there's, if there's state parks, then that definitely counts. Um, as a as a place to go so I don't know start there that might be you know that that might be really good mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> um but you know these are things that these various organizations can certainly give you guidance on and help you with hopefully um and you know, over time, you will figure out ways of spending your time. You know, do you do you participate in content creation? Do you have a YouTube channel? Do you do you have a podcast? What are some activities that you are trying to 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 do to occupy your time? Uh, if I'm totally honest with you right now, dude, uh, I've been in such a dark place lately that I haven't really been doing anything. I, yeah, you know, it's the what, same thing every I day. Would, I just wake up. And that's what I was sit on the couch would, and just, I, I don't know. It's just dark, you know? Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's kind of what I was afraid yeah. of. Um, but I mean, even if you can start doing little, yeah. you know, a little will help you a lot, you know? So let's say you go for a hike with your wife and kids tomorrow, and you walk around for maybe 30 minutes, you would feel, you would feel so much better. Yeah. Just saying. Food for thought. No. Who knows? No, Who knows? Um, but I mean, have you thought about starting a podcast? I have. Um... My sister-in-law actually bought me like a Yeti microphone and everything to get started. And I just... Well, why didn't... Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> so your sister bought you a, a blue Yeti microphone, okay? That, and you yes. haven't started a podcast. Well... No. <laughs> no one ever buys me a blue Yeti microphone. Why doesn't I'm, your sister buy me a blue Yeti microphone? I already I, have a podcast. <laughs> What's wrong? God! I, I, I'm sorry. It just... I don't know. And you know what? I was... I was so eager about it. I was all gung ho about it. I and then I did. Um, is it like the anchor? Is that what it is? That's what we're on right now. Yeah, that's okay. where that's where I host. Yeah. So I did like a test mm -hmm. thing. I don't know. My voice is like. I think it's annoying. So I was like, <laughs> no one's gonna want to listen. No, to no. If your voice is annoying, people definitely want to listen to it. I mean, my <laughs> voice is annoying, and people listen to it. So you know, it it just depends on how your voice is. But it really depends on, on the content that you want to put out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the goal, um, I was, <laughs> was going to call it High Times with the Blind Guy. Um, mm. And it was, it, was, it was supposed to be like funny, but it was also going to be parenting and life through a visually impaired person, also a stoner. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so just like a little bit of everything, hopefully. And, and the, the goal was to bridge the gap between, you know, like a way that I want to teach in sociology, a way to bridge the gap between the sighted and the visually impaired, you know, to make, cause I know I can feel when people yank their kids out of my way or they, you know, and they do stuff like that. So I just, I want to bridge that gap a little bit. 
Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think that's a great idea. And I, 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 want, I want you to start this. I want you to start this, this podcast because it'll really help you. And then you can talk to a whole global audience. We have people listening to Aaron's opinion on, on all of the continents. I'm not kidding. We really do. So really, you should definitely start a podcast about this topic. Mm-hmm. You think people will listen to it? I'll listen. Yeah? Yeah. So I'll listen. So try that. Try tomorrow, for example. I, I, have, I have a challenge for you. And if time permits you to do so, I hope you accept the challenge. I want you to produce an episode of your podcast, produce it, you know, publish it, and send it back to me. And I'll tell you what I think. But I want you to speak from your heart, and I want you to speak about all the things that are going on, and I want you to love speaking about it. You're going to have to become comfortable talking about things that are uncomfortable. You're going to have to get used to the sound of your own voice and you're going to have to love your voice because it's your voice. So that is the challenge that I hope you accept. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. So is is there a time frame (laughs) for this? Well, time frame is whenever you want, but try to speak. You know, I can speak for hours before I came and talked to you today. I worked for eight hours talking to people all over the world, talking for eight hours. I'm not asking you to talk for eight hours. I would say, let's start with 30 minutes. Can you create an episode of your podcast for 30 minutes where you encourage people to listen to your story and listen to what you have to say using the experience you've you've had and the feelings that you're having now and the things that you hope to do and learn? And if you can talk about yourself and talk about that in 30 minutes, then let's, let's give it a play for 30 minutes. Yeah. And once you produce that episode, I will gladly share it. I will gladly share your story. Of course, your story is already here on my podcast, but I will gladly share this particular episode and pass it around and say, hey, you know what? You guys, matter of fact, matter of fact, I know where to put it. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it right back under the, the post that you created in the Blind and Visually Impaired Support Group so that everybody else can learn even more about you. So that would be good. Thank that you. would be that would be getting things going. Yeah. Thank you for <laughs> Right, right. So, uh, yeah, so I mean, do you think do you think you can do that? Hopefully. Yeah, I will give it a shot. All right. Well, let's hear it. So, when you're done with your when you publish your episode, you can of course text it to me. You can of course just send the link back to me on Messenger, however you want to send it. I don't care. Just send it and let me let me give it a play. Because I don't just interview anyone, although all of you are welcome here on this podcast. But, you know, I can tell as a podcaster who's been in it for two or three years, I can tell when I need to contact someone. I have that sixth sense, you know. I can, I can tell when I need to tell a story and when I need to help someone else to share theirs. And this is one of these, you know, one of these times. One of these times in history. Brad, I tell you, you know, I was, oh, boy, I get it. You know what? Hold, guys, hold, hold on a second. Let me just, let me just turn off my camera. Let me go move two feet for two seconds to get my other cup of coffee because I gotta, I gotta wet my whistle. Hold on here. You know, uh, here, you can take a drink of water if you have it with you. So let's see, camera. Sure, you guys like to see me. Here, let here. Let's have some coffee. Um. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I tell you, I was talking to this other guy who's already who's already been here on the podcast, and he messaged me, or I messaged him over a year ago, and he just got back to me, and we just finished recording an episode a couple of weeks ago. And we had a really long discussion, and the episode is not. Um, I don't think the episode is. I, I, guys, 
I, I, you, you all are such amazing guests from all over the world. I lose track of what I, of when stuff comes out and when it's not out. I, I don't think I've published it yet. Um, <clears throat> but it was one of those episodes, one of those serious conversations with mo most of the topics here are serious. Um, and I encourage you to go through my whole catalog because I have a lot of laughs here on the podcast. There's a lot of wonderful people like you and we have a lot of wonderful times. Um, but, you know, the, the, the fact is, is that this other guy that I was talking to, he really needed to share, you know, he really needed to share his story. And we concluded that there was a very special reason why he didn't see my message until an entire year had passed by, because he needed to share his message on that particular day and time. And, you know, God has a place for everything. You know, sometimes they set stuff up, you know, and they say, hey, you know what, this is the day that you need to talk about this. So I'm suspicious. This is the day that you ne you really needed to have this conversation. I'm very, very suspicious of that. So I'm really glad. I'm really glad to to have helped to to help and to continue helping. As for that blue, as for that blue Yeti, blue Yeti microphone. Well, have you figured out how to use it? Um, yeah, I did a test sample, and that's when I didn't like my voice. I was like, hey, no one's gonna listen to this. Uh, I, I, I am. I am, and I am, and I would love a Blue Yeti. Um, at least I think I would. I don't know. I'm pretty delighted with my headset, but I'm not going to lie out there in the audience. Um, I would love a Blue Yeti. Um, not quite yet, because I'm working on some other projects, and I don't really want to bother with it yet, but I would I would love a Blue Yeti. Um, yeah. Um, so that's, that's definitely the podcaster's dream for sure. That's one of the best ones, but there are many, as far as the technology for podcasting goes, Brad, there are many, 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 many microphones. You can use the microphone on your phone. You can use a headset. I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it, but what is the most important thing? And again, as I was saying last night with my guest last night, the most important thing is the audience, 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 audience. You have to know who your audience is. You have to understand how to build rapport and how to talk to people. And once you do that, then you really are able to make further and further connections around the community. And then it really, and then it really gets rewarding. And then someone like you, who right now you need a little bit of help, right? Quite frankly, That's, quite frankly, I, you probably need a lot of help right now. But I one need day, <laughs> okay, you need a lot. Okay, that's fair. But yeah. one day you'll be podcasting and you'll talk to someone else and you'll discover, wait a minute, that was my situation. Wait a minute, now I'm helping them. So that should be the true goal of all of this in the end. What, what do you think about all of that? Yeah, that's, like I said earlier, I, I just, I want to connect with people and I think that's a good way to do it. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a real good way to do it. I, can I ask you something? You can ask me all of your questions. You're you're not the first person that I've met that has told me that they that there's something about me that that drew them in. What what am I not seeing about myself? Because if I'm being honest, I I, yeah. I I don't. It's not that I hate myself, right? Um, but I would be I would do things a little bit differently if I could, you know? Right. The difference is, is that it's going to sting a little bit. It's going to be a little stinger when I say this to you. The truth of the matter is, is that although I'm also having some issues in my life dealing with some things and some anxieties that I have, in all honesty, number one, I don't have a wife and kids to worry about. And that's a blessing and a curse because I don't need to worry as much about what others think of me because I'm in this kind of, how do I even express it? This, I don't know what to say, Brad. Brad, Brad, Brad what am I trying to say? Like, I'm not in the same... situation si situation let's just use the word situation okay all right i'm not in the same situation as you are and because of my love for broadcasting 
and content creation and my love for teaching, I have already found and discovered that this is one of the things I'm supposed to be doing in life. Um, you have to figure out what your gift is. Basically, there was a great American writer by the name of Samuel Clemens. You might know him as Mark Twain, but I know him as Samuel Clemens. He said a lot of funny things in life and he made a lot of great comments about society. And quite frankly, I'm sure that in spirit, Samuel Clemens even listens to Aaron's opinion. Okay, that's a little weird. Okay, <laughs> but it's just my imagination. Okay, weird, whoa. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, so before I scare you, okay, let me just tell you that there are only two days in life that are important. The day you were born, and the day you found out why. Nobody knows precisely why we were in these predicaments, situations, life experiences. No one quite knows. But when you find out reasons that might lead you to that path, then maybe, just maybe, you would start to really understand what drew me to you and what draws others to you. Clearly, we see something, right? Because what it is, is we see potential. Because I know as someone, and I'm, I'm not going to lie about this, as someone who has and had a fixation about the military, okay? The fact that you said the military part in your post, that's what drew me. So I'll be honest, that's what drew me to you, was the fact that I know that you love this country and that you care. Simply the fact that you served in the military shows me that you're, that you're a great person, that you care. So that is what you need to figure out. Oh, it's so hard. It's so hard. I know. I just. I know. And the problem is, is that until you figure it out, it just kind of gets harder and harder. Yeah. 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 This is a, this is a new low for me lately. Yeah. Yeah. And and this one's tough. This one is. And has it just been several different things? Has it been this? I mean, you know, you don't need to really, I mean, you obviously shouldn't tell me on the recording and you don't need to tell me at all, but do you yeah. want to tell me maybe like what specifically happened? I mean, I think something happened, but I'm suspicious, but do you want to tell me what happened? Um, I think it's just things that, things that trigger. Yeah. Um, like vision pretty much basically upset me anything that just so it just it's things that require vision i get it triggers my anger and i get upset and it just yeah yeah you know that's really hard and we all have those triggers i have them um there are certain certain things that set me off too and i've been born blind my whole life and the, the, the the truth is is that you need to understand what triggers you i can't answer that I'm not qualified to answer it. You yes. need to figure it out for you. You need to figure out for, for, for Brad. You need to figure it out, you know? But I will say this, that you will always have triggers and your life will always be a little bit harder now that you're blind. But your life can be a little bit easier now that you're in podcasting and now that you understand the importance of sharing this message. So all I can say is, you're right. It's tough. You're right. It hurts. You're right. It's not fair. So... So what? So podcast. So you so 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 go so go about your business. Go live your life, step by step, baby steps. Right? It's not yeah. going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen next week, next year <sighs> even. But if you just take a couple steps in the right direction, one one tiny step, one tiny step, would feel so much better. Phew. Yeah. And and just that. That first step is the hardest, you know, I just, I don't know. And I think that's what I struggle with the most is I, I don't know how to help myself. And I've been going to therapists and good and, and, and talking to people and I'm finding out that it's like, nobody knows how to help me, you know? And I, that's where I feel like the most lost is I don't know how to help myself. Professionals don't know how to help me. Where do I go from here? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have you talk to this other guy that was on my podcast. Uh, he's a veterans advocate, and I think that's who you need. You need to have a you need to have a conversation with a veterans ad- advocate, someone who knows where you were, um, and knows where you are, and knows where you can be. 
And although I care, I cannot answer that for you. That's the conversation that, that you need that, you know, that, that, that you need to have. Um, yeah. And um, so that's definitely some of the things that I would like to try to put into motion. You speaking to this particular person um, and things like that. Goodness, 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 goodness. For someone who was so nervous and had so much to say, that was actually an hour. Um, wow. I do want to, I know. I know we really we really dug into the philosophy there. We I lost track of the time too, and I just Whew. feel like there's so much more too. You know, it just barely well, scratched the surface. I think but, you know what. Let me let me ask you one question. And if you say I don't know, that's a really good answer. Brad, did I help you tonight with helping you to record this episode? Absolutely. You you helped me the the day you messaged me, and. If I'm being honest, I wasn't going to message you back because everyone else who messaged me gave me this long story. They were like, this is who I am, yada, yada. And you just sent me hello. So I <laughs> I said to my wife, I was like, you think they let like weirdos into this group? <laughs> like, Yeah, they you know? do. Yeah, I'm weird. Yeah, I, they, they let me in. They fell for it. Well, okay. no, because every, I, I didn't because everyone was like, hey, you know, this is blah, blah, my whole story. And you're just like, hello. I was and like. <laughs> and then I, I told you more you know why I did that because it was late I'll tell you why it was late at night and I needed to get back to you with other information later but I knew if I didn't say hello I would forget to get back to you and wouldn't be able to find you again because the oh. people keep disappearing that's why I do that that's a really good observation I had okay. all the intention so now that you're here how do you yeah. feel now, now that you've done this I feel so much better I, I, I mean, I mean, so much better to an extent, obviously. That's fair. You know what? It's fair. I think, you know what? I think you're a strong person and I think, I think you need help. I think you're strong and I think you're doing a great job. Do you have, if you can ask me, because we talked over, because you, because you're such a great guest here at Aaron Zipini Night, we needed to talk about all of the, all of those things. Um, do you have one more question that you want to ask me to really make me sweat to really see if I'm worth my salt as a podcaster. Go. Yes, there is. If I ever get a podcast started, yeah. Will you be a guest on an episode? Yes. There, there it you is. go. There it, it is. I just if if no, but genuinely it's yes. always been I want to reach out to people. If I can I reach, reach out to you? Let's reach out to me. Let's in, let, let's include me. All right. All right. That was that was a great episode. Hold on. Don't hang up. Let me stop the recording. That was great.